welcome to Beats Research Radio, a podcast and YouTube channel dedicated to communicating science and biomedical engineering research to the communicating. My name is Nicole Chu, your host today. I'm currently an undergraduate student at the University of Ottawa studying biomedical science. Joining us today is a very special guest, Dr. Bao Xiaoyi, a full professor at the University of Ottawa and Tier 1 Canada Research Chair in Fiber Optics and Photonics. Dr. Bao obtained her PhD from Anhui Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics. Her research includes the study of nonlinear optical effects in fibers for applications in sensing, nanofiber in devices, lasers, op and optical signal processing. Dr. Bao is an internationally acknowledged expert in the field of nonlinear fiber optics and has earned many prestigious awards, including the honorary doctorate from the University of Lethbridge. Welcome, Dr. Bao. We are so happy to have you today. And thanks Thank for joining you. us. So we'd like to begin by asking all our guests, what is your most what do you find most fascinating about your field and what made you interested in studying fiber optics? Okay, so the interest uh, to the field of the fiber optics is because it's a combination of exploring the new knowledge and um, in particular in the nonlinear fiber optics uh, that we can understand, explore the new physics and then uh, using the physics, uh, we can design the instrumentation device uh, that instrumentation device will help us to understand the physics process. And more importantly, that process of developing instrumentation can be used for some real world monitoring. And the combination of new physics, new ideas to solve the different problems and then make the system, make it very attractive to the real world. And you have both aspect of the innovation and also real application benefit to society. And uh, so my research is uh, sort of uh, thinking the fiber is like a nerve since uh, you're in the biomedical. So the nerve, everybody has that. But if you're looking at the real world and uh, like buildings and the bridge, they, they don't have a nerve. So we, our nerve would tell me Ah, uh, I have a pain, I'm not in good condition, but uh, like uh, airplanes and the bridge and the pipelines and dams, and highways, and tunnels, and all that kind of the things, uh, they don't have a nerve. So they don't know they are in good condition or not. So we're the one, we insert a nerve using the optical fiber to all these kinds of the structures. And that this nerve would tell you are tell our society, our people, and owner of all these bridge, if they are in the good condition or they are not in good condition, to be able to read this nerve information, you have to build the instrument, and that is my research. So, to make it simple, so the research is to give the function to the fiber to make it not just transmitting the information like a telecom, and I would make it have a feeling. A feeling would tell you uh, that bridge are not in good condition, just like our body. And uh, your health check would tell you you're not in good shape here and there. And we would tell all these structures from the air, the sky, airplane to the ocean. Yes, uh, there's something wrong in the ocean, tsunami or ocean wave, and also to the ground railway and uh, that is our safety guard tunnels and the bridge pipelines and all that things that uh, you can think about it power generator power lines uh, lots of things so that is my research and i find very interesting and not only from physics aspect or to looking the new physics aspect but also really useful benefit our society Wow, that's amazing. And I love how you compared it to innervating different buildings like our body's nerves. That makes it so easy to understand. And like you said, innervating different like dams and buildings. Can you share with us a bit how your research is currently being used in industrial applications? Right. So the uh, 
seeing the nerve and then uh, they can see the image. So now we kind of using the fiber to do like a imaging of the buildings and the pipelines and all the airplanes if they are in good condition. So you could say, why do you use a fiber? There are some conventional method that can be used for the testing and I don't have to use a fiber. Well, just like one example, for instance, the airplanes. And the airplane, they can only carry certain weight but if you use a traditional like a string gauge to measure the stress or the temperature or the pressure and each of those sensors, the wire going in and the wire coming out in the electrical wire, they have a weight. But if you need to test like a 200 of these kind of pressure, strain and temperatures, you would have a 400 wires of plus a monitoring system they are very heavy. But if you're using the optical fibers and every location of the fiber is a nerve, so then you would tell that a nerve in different location are in good shape or not in good shape. And of course, we need to find a way to decode that nerve feeling. And that's my research. And it's a very lightweight. So the optical fiber is like, like our here, and very thin and very small. So they are very lightweight and they are very critical for the airplane. You don't want a lot of the wires taking a few humans weight. And this lightweight is very good. And another example would be this fiber cable. And the COVID make us working from home and we are so much relying on the internet and if the internet is in good shape yes even the fiber cable are in good shape or not good shape and you have to be able to test that the way we can test that is we can find out if these fiber cable are in good shape to give the error signal or not good error signal so we would know the fiber cable are in good shape or not in good shape so that is a health monitoring of all these structures and fiber cables and railways, all kinds of things. And also, as I said, including in the sea. And then we have these on the ground, not on the ground, these submarine fiber cable. So the submarine fiber cable can hear the earth wave. And uh, that earth wave would tell you if uh, there will be some kind of a tsunami coming or some wave are really unusual wave. And we can even some kind of an intruder under the sea, like a hydrophone. And uh, so those cable would tell you, the fiber cable would tell you there will be something intrusion are coming to save our guard and seaport. So that could be all kinds of applications. The key is that instrumentation is able to detect those kinds of the signal. And that is my research, yes. Wow, that's incredible to learn your research and it's multidisciplinary application. And I loved how you mentioned the different like internet and integrating the marine. And can you share with us a bit about your current research work? Right. Um, we have been doing quite a lot of the field test, uh, like a bridge test and uh, submarine and uh, railway and uh, nuclear reactor. Yes, those are also very important the uh, safety. Well, through all those kinds of the tests, and uh, I found them, the limitation are not only from the nerve side, but also how sensitive your detection system is able to detect that signal. That sensitivity not only decided by your this nerve itself, but also transmitting the signal from your source to be able to read that, which is a laser. And the laser source will introduce a noise because there is a quantum noise. And this laser itself has the quantum noise. 
and uh, to be able to detect uh, the laser signal with uh, the lowest uh, noise to beat quantum noise, that would be our dream. So then uh, we have been uh, doing some initial work uh, uh, to do the hydrophone. The Earth's uh, motion has a very slow speed. That slow speed means a very low frequency. And the quantum noise has the highest noise at the lowest frequency. So any time if you detect that slow frequency and you're likely limited by the quantum noise from the laser, so we must be able to address that to make a lowest noise to beat that quantum noise. So that is a, one of our, our research direction is trying to overcome that quantum noise limit. And other research are also, we are trying to understand what is the noise feature in the laser. And you can control that laser noise, but also you can increase that noise. Well, when you increase that noise, this noise can be used to generate a random number because it's a random noise. Quantum noise is a random noise. So you can use that to create a random noise generator. That random noise generator can be used to code our signal to guard data security, to allow the safety of the information transmission. So that's also one of those research direction we're working on. And also we are working on to increase uh, the functionality of the nerve. And um, not only like uh, in the medical, you say you feel pain, but not only pain, there are others feeling you have, and you can describe to the doctor. And here we give more functionality to the nerve to detect uh, the feeling of these uh, buildings, uh, and the bridge and everything. So then you could have multi-parameter sensors by single nerve. So that multi-parameter sensors can overcome some kind of correlation information. For instance, temperature, humidity, and salinity, and refract index change. So then we can use one sensor head to read three or four information. So we can decode that and uh, then uh, you can get an accurate reading when you are able to decode all these kind of different information. So the multi-parameter sensor is our another target. Huh? And to be able to detect the earth wave, earthquake, and all those kind of the information, you really need to have a very high sensitivity and also be able to give the direction of the sound wave. And that is also one of those, our research directions. So that's pretty much what we're doing, unless some other important things come up, we will jump into that. Well, your research directions sound very interesting, and I love how you compared the fiber optics to a nerve, making it so important to our daily lives and not just to industrial applications. And that was so informative. So thank you so much, Dr. Ball, for joining us today and for sharing your perspective on the ever-evolving field of photonics and optical fibers. That was such an interesting conversation, and thank you very much. And thank you everyone for joining us today for our episode with Dr. Bell. And we hope everyone has a good and healthy weekend and see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you.